what is a church member? So if you are part of the church, then you need to be part of a church. And if you are part of a church, such as Hillman Grove Baptist Church, we believe that you need to also be a member of that church. And so uh, we're going to look at some verses that talk about talks about what it means to be a member of a church. And so first and foremost, if you're a member of a church, you need to be a follower of Jesus. You need to be an actual disciple. You can't just be someone who was uh, merely born to one of the members of the church. You actually need to be a follower of Jesus yourself. And you need to be baptized. So let's look at 1 Peter 2, 9. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You need to be called out of that darkness into his marvelous light to become a member. And um, you need to be part of the chosen race and a royal priesthood and the holy nation. You need to be part of that to become a church member. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, it says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. You have to be part of Christ's body to be a church member. And uh, being a church member in a Baptist church, we believe that it is an elementary step of discipleship, something that should happen uh, soon after baptism. And so we believe uh, baptism is an elementary step of obedience as being a disciple of Jesus, and that um, often baptism is also the admittance into the church, part of the admittance into the church. So it's an elementary step of discipleship. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, 2. For to the church of God, that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Jesus in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. And it shows that to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Jesus Christ, uh, to be called saints together with all those in every place. So these people are, are uh, it's expected that if you are a saint, that you ought to be a saint together, that you ought to be a member of a church. And in uh, Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and the deacons. And it's expecting that all of the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi are members of a church, are with the overseers and the deacons, the elders and the deacons, the pastors and the deacons. That if they are a saint, that they are uh, going to be a member of that local church. And so in um, uh, Matthew 18, we're going to go to that passage, and we're going to explain why we believe that being a part of a church is actually being a member of a church. So to truly be a part of a church, you need to be a member of the church. And the way that we define membership is found in how... Um, interestingly, is found in, in the passage of, of how people are removed from the church. So we, we actually develop our doctrine on becoming a member of the church in the way that the scripture describes um, people as being removed from the church. So let's go over this interesting passage here where it describes people as being removed from the church as being an action of the church. And so we believe that if that's required to remove a member— then to uh, introduce a member, then they ought to be put in place by the church. And so it says um, this. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen... 
take one or two others along with you, that the every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to even listen to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. And so we believe that it takes an act of the church to remove somebody, and therefore it ought to take an act of the church to introduce somebody into membership. And and there's a reason that we believe that membership is, is important, and because we need to look at two um, ideas. We need to look at the two ideas about how a member is accountable to the church and responsible for the church. And if uh, these important ideas are to be carried out, uh, then it's important for the whole church to recognize who is a part of them. If they have to remove people, then how do they know that those people are truly a part of the church, are truly members of the church? The members of the church need to be recognized by the entire church. And so let's look at what it means to be accountable to the church and what it means to be responsible for the church. And to start with being accountable to the church, we start in Hebrews 10.25, um, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. We see that we are supposed to be accountable to one another. We are supposed to be, in this case, encourage one another and meet together. Not neglecting, but, but meeting together. It being a habit to meet together. Not a habit to, to uh, stay away from one another, but a habit to meet together regularly. And in Matthew uh, 18, uh, 15 through 20, we see also that we're accountable to the church, meaning that we are accountable to discipline from the church. And in Galatians 6, 1, it says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted." So we are accountable to one another so that we can, uh, that our sins can be addressed with one another, so that we can be convicted of our sins and that we can defeat those sins, put those sins to death so that we can live out the life of a Christian. And so in Galatians 1, it talks about how if we are caught in any transgression, that we should be restored in a spirit of gentleness by those who are spiritual. So those in our church should restore us in a spirit of gentleness. But that's assuming that we are repentant of our transgression. And in the Matthew 18 passage, it highlights how if we are not repentant of our transgression, that there is a structure, an order to how we are to be addressed with eventually being removed from the church. And that being the intention is to be the last resort, the last call uh, for repentance, so that they would be, um, so that they would be uh, made known how serious their transgression is, that they need to repent. And if they are removed from the church, it is, a, it is to to uh, put fear into their hearts that they uh, would repent again, uh, that they they would repent to God. Put fear of the fear of God in their hearts that they would repent. And so, um, not only are we accountable to the church, but we are also responsible for the church. And in uh, 1 John 3.14, it says, We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. And we see that we are responsible to love one another. And so, that's something that is available for everybody to do. Everybody can participate in this, can participate in being responsible for the church, for loving one another. We all are connected to different uh, people in different ways, and so we have uh, better friendships with some people than others, but that's, a, that's an opportunity that you get to love specific people in ways that you are gifted. 
And in 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 26, it says, If one member suffers, all suffer. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. So here we see that if uh, that we are all together, that we need to be responsible for, for all of us as well. And so we need to... Um, suffer together. We need to bring up people who are suffering out of the suffering. We need to uh, honor and rejoice with those who are honored and rejoiced and, and rejoicing. So it's a wonderful thing to love one another, to be responsible for the church. And in 1 Timothy 5, 16, it says, if any believing woman has relatives who are widows, let her care for them. Let the church not be burdened so that it may care for those who are truly widows. Now, that's an interesting kind of a negative pa uh, passage, but it shows that there is a structure and it shows that the church ought to truly care for true widows. So those who are in true, true need, who truly need our need, that we ought to care for them. And there's a structure, and it talks about how the family ought to care for one another so the church isn't burdened, so that they are freed to care for those who are truly in need. But the point is that, that the church, that we're supposed to be responsible for one another. And uh, the church members, um, here's the, the, main, um, the main thing here. So, uh, to equip the saints for the, the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And that's what elders are supposed to do, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And that's why the, the church is lived out by the members, because the church, the, the work of the ministry is done by the whole church. And the whole church builds up the body of Christ because we are responsible for one another, encouraging one another, uh, bringing each other out of suffering, rejoicing with one another, honoring one another. That's building up the body of Christ. And so we are called to do that together. We are called, if we are followers of Jesus, we are called to be church members. If we are church members, we are called to be accountable to the church and responsible for the church.